Now you may be wondering at this point, so what? I mean, do we really need all these different series? Geometric binomial, what are these things even used for? Well, let's go on a little side quest. Let's do a quick trip into some applications to physics. This is kind of bonus material. Don't worry about the details of this. This is just for fun. Let's look at some electrostatics. Consider an electric dipole. This is a pair of equal and oppositely charged particles that are separated by some short span. So you think about these two guys and they got their charges and they're in space and it's like electric and potentials and stuff like that. Okay, back to the story. We're going to consider the electrostatic potential. This is a function that gives the potential energy of this dipole as a sum of point charge potentials. What do I mean by that? We've got this function, V, the potential, and it is given by the formula C times quantity one over D plus minus one over D minus. What is that? What are these guys? Well, this C is a constant that depends on the Coulomb constant and on the charge of these two particles. The D plus, the D minus, these are distances to the individual charges in the dipole. So let's illustrate it this way. We have a pair of charges, one positive, one negative. They are separated by a short distance. Let's call that epsilon. Then the potential V depends on the position with respect to the dipole and its orientation. So I pick some point out in space that has a distance D plus to the positive charge, D minus to the negative charge. And this formula gives you what the electrostatic potential is. Okay. Okay. Now, Let's start investigating what that function looks like with respect to, say, these constants epsilon or to, say, the distance to the positive charge. Let's start off by looking at a location that is orthogonal to the dipole that is directly above the positive charge at a distance d. This quantity, V, is equal to C times quantity 1 over d, that's the distance to the positive charge, and then minus one over the distance to the negative charge. What is that? Well, you could see I've got a little right triangle in there. So a little bit of Pythagoras gives us that that distance to the negative charge is square root of d squared plus epsilon squared. If I take this and factor out a one over d, then what do I have left over? I've got c times one over d times quantity one Factoring out from the first term, factoring out from the second term gives me a minus quantity one plus epsilon squared over d squared all to the negative one half power. That negative one half power is how I get that one over the square root in there. Ah, now I look at this and I say, ha ha, this looks like a job for the binomial series to expand that out. Oh wait, can I apply that? What about the convergence radius? Ah, well, here we're thinking of epsilon as being much, much smaller than d. So that term, oh yeah, that's much, much less than one in absolute value. We're good to go. Applying the binomial series, we get for our v, c times quantity one over d times quantity one minus what? Well, let's see, the first term in the binomial is one, and then I've got a minus one half times the guy, which is epsilon squared over d squared, and then I've got I don't remember the other terms, but they're all higher order terms, and we're just going to pay attention to the leading order term. Notice that those ones cancel out, and we are left with c times epsilon squared over 2d cubed. That leading order term in the potential up to this constant c is epsilon squared over 2d cubed. And this is really cool because this tells you how that potential changes if you change epsilon a little bit or if you change d a little bit you could see that you're changing the potential by the square of epsilon and the cube of d that's kind of cool not obvious from the formula the expansion really told us a lot there well Let's change things up a bit. Let's look at a potential that is parallel to the dipole, but again, a distance d away from the positive charge. What is v in this case? Well, it's c times one over d, distance to the positive charge, minus one over the distance to the negative charge, which here in this configuration is d plus epsilon. 
factoring out a 1 over d, we're left with 1 minus quantity 1 plus epsilon over d to the negative 1 power. Aha, this is different now. This is appropriate for a geometric series, which again is legal because epsilon is much, much less than d. So our potential is c times 1 over d times 1 minus quantity 1 minus epsilon over d, and then you got plus epsilon squared over d squared, etc., etc. But we're going to ignore those higher order terms. The ones cancel. We're left with v equals c times epsilon over d squared. Very interesting. The leading order term is totally different. Instead of epsilon squared over 2d cubed, we now have epsilon over d squared. Using these different series, depending on the orientation, is giving you access to the leading order terms in this electrostatic potential. And if you think about what this function is actually doing in 3D, ooh, it's really cool. There's a whole lot of geometry going on with these equipotential surfaces. That's way beyond what we're going to get into. But there is some cool stuff that we are able to extract from a judicious use of binomial and geometric series. And that's kind of cool. But it's okay if you don't understand the physics. Don't worry about it.